Ah, it's so good to know you're still there. I want to welcome you all back. This is Today with John and Helen. Mm -hmm. And it's time for us to meet our next guest. That's Omilola Oshikoya, who will be helping us on knowing how wealth can be created. Thanks for having you on the program. Omilola, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thank Great. you, Milola. Like I say, you look wealthy. You Ooh. smell wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be in your shoes. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of the show. And this you morning. do as well. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay, so can you briefly explain to us how wealth can be created? I love this question. I get this, asked this question a lot, but I, I think the first thing is to describe what wealth is. So when people think of wealth, they, uh, they think money immediately. But for me, I say wealth is more than money. And the pandemic, COVID, has made that very clear to us. Health is wealth. Mm. You know, I mean, with the whole restrictions, um, easing of lockdown, it's not because they mm. found a cure, but it's, they're literally saying may the best immune system, you know, win. So health is wealth. Um, family is wealth, you know. There are other aspects of wealth, but most people think about money. But because of these discussions today, we're going to be talking about how to create wealth in terms of money. Now, the first thing is to understand what money is. And when I ask people what money is, most people think money is the paper currency that you see, the one dollar, the hundred naira notes, or the hundred dollar notes, or the five hundred naira notes. But that's not money. Okay. Mm. Okay, so let me explain why. You have to look at the history of money to understand why that's not money and to find out what money is. Now, back, back in the day, before the paper currency was created, we used to exchange through what? Trade by batter. Yeah. Right. So if I wanted to buy, if I had corn and I wanted to eat a cow with my mm. corn, I would ex go and go to a hunter or a farmer and exchange Indeed. my corn for a cow. Yes. And so essentially... The more cows I would need, I would have to put in enough energy and skill to making my, to growing my corn. Okay. Or as a hunter, I would need a lot of energy and skill to make sure I catch enough bush meat or you know whatever it is. But then eventually, it became difficult to how many how many corns will mm -hmm. you give for mm -hmm. a cow? It became difficult mm -hmm. to measure. Cumbersome. Exactly. So they decided to then the carry system. But then gold was discovered. Okay. And so what happened was, you then used to exchange for gold. You know, you say, oh, I have this amount of gold. I want to buy land and I give gold. But then at some point, it became too difficult to carry gold from point A to point B. And this mm -hmm. is how the banking yeah. system started. And mm -hmm. so they decided, okay, a banker will keep the gold and I will give you a, a, mm -hmm. a, a note. like a note that just says a, a promissory note. Mm -hmm. I promise I to pay you based on the value of gold I had in storage. Wow. But then, and so if you look at the 50 pounds note today, it actually says, I promise to pay you. It was a promise free note. Mm. But some clever people decided to scrap the gold value and focus on the paper currency. Where people started chasing the currency, countries started naming their own yen, naira. Mm -hmm. And so instead of people focusing on value, they started chasing the paper. But the paper is just the measure that changes over time. So eventually, paper currency was too heavy to carry, then the check system started. Hmm. Then eventually, cards, now digital currency. Mm -hmm. But what we are calling money is just the measure. It's like saying a tape rule is the outfit. It's not. It's just the measure. So money is value. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to understand in terms of how to create wealth is understanding what money is value. So you focus on how do I create value. And that is why oh, yeah. the likes of Jeff Bezos, the likes of Elon Musk, even when there's a pandemic, even when there's a financial crisis and there's inflation and all sorts of things, they're constantly attracting money. Money is current. It's currency. It flows to where um, value is being created. But created. if you chase it, you will never get it. So they are creating value. That's why they had, he had created the Amazon platform since 1994. But then in the pandemic, because he had this platform, or like the Zoom yeah. owner, value went, I'm sorry, money went to them. Yeah. So the thing is, you need to be able to create value. And there are two ways to create value either as an employee or as an entrepreneur, but I'll stop there. This is, mm. this, this is, this is interesting because the evolution of money that you, of wealth, or is it of money? Of money. Money, of money that you've given to us now makes, uh, simplified everything so yes. much. Mm. It has made one understand that um, it has, over time it became an institution, a proper institution that would have principles. What are those principles? The simpler ones. 
Okay, so I will go, uh, let, let's take it down to the principles in terms of how do you then create the value. value. Precisely. So you can create value two ways predominantly, either as an employee or as an entrepreneur. So looking at it from an employee point of view, you create value in exchange for compensation. So you help somebody achieve their own vision by creating value for that person and the person gives you a paycheck or reward. Mm -hmm. And so there are different ways um, to do that. So one of the things is that work in something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So because at the end of the day, there's always a process in life. You cannot, there, it says it takes 20 years to become an overnight success. You know, yeah. you literally have to. So, but if you're not passionate, if you go and go, everybody's in tech now. You know, if you go and do tech and you're not passionate about tech, you will give up because mm -hmm. there's always a process. But it's those that are passionate about it that will stick through the process. Another way is as an employee, develop yourself. Benjamin Franklin says that the best investment is the investment in yourself. And so when you develop and invest in yourself, you actually make yourself indispensable. So for instance, I remember in the 2016 recession, a colleague of mine who worked in oil and gas, all the oil and gas companies were sacking staff. The only reason why they did not sack him was because he was the only one that had the financial modeling skills to help the company restructure its, its funding. Mm. That's why he didn't get sacked. So how can you make yourself indispensable so that when there's a pandemic, you're the last person that they, they, they let go of? Be innovative. How can I create value for my company? How can I make my company reduce costs in this, in this season? How can I increase revenues for my company? That way you find that management will look up to you. Another thing is seek additional responsibilities. Don't stick to your job description. The easiest way to get promoted is to um, go and do additional responsibilities. So when I worked, when I was an audit assistant in Deloitte, um, it's, you were about three or four levels before you become a manager. But as an audit assistant, I was already doing the work of the manager, not because they told me to, because I asked for the opportunity. So I was able to, and so when there's a vacancy, they, yeah. who are they going to look for you because you have the experience? Yes. Never say no. When I say never say no, I'm not saying compromise on your values. I'm saying that if you are given a task that you don't understand, don't say you don't know how to do it. Say thank you and go and figure out how to do it. Mm. I remember when my first investment, when I got into my, the investment banking job that I, I, I left before I set up my own thing, I was asked to, to create a proposal to the um, president of Nigeria. And at the time, I was the most junior on the team. There were about four people before my boss. And so I went to the second person before my boss and I asked, you know, for advice, and he gave me advice. And so it was the group CEO, I think it was probably a test. He just walks up to my desk and says, yep, oh, this must be the new girl. Prepare this document, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, so I had asked my senior colleague, he told me, and I remember giving it to the group CEO, and he looks at it, and he's like, this is absolutely rubbish. Mm. I remember going to the bathroom, and I cried. Right. <laughs> I went back. I didn't go and ask anybody this time. I went, and I prayed to God. Figured. And I figured God gave me the instructions. I think, and I was able out. to do it. A Saturday morning, I was in the office. I sent it. The office is near his house. Sent it to the, my boss, and I was waiting for feedback. I didn't hear anything. Monday, Tuesday, and I bumped into him. Like I couldn't even sleep all the days. And I'm like, um, excuse me, sir, how was the document? Like, oh, it was really good. Yeah. I've, I've already sent it to the president of Nigeria. <laughs> you know, and I was a junior level. But if imagine if I said no, I can't yeah. do it. Yes. You know. So I mean, there are different mm. ways. You network your way up. Yes. Don't just. Um, Network with people on your level. level. Network mm. below you because you mm. never know who's going to open the door. But also, don't be afraid to network up. Mm. You know, if you don't have a job, volunteer. Mm -hmm. The best way is to volunteer. Eventually, as you volunteer, you are building up experience. Be available. And yes, and all these big companies, they're actually looking for interns, volunteer positions. And one day, you, they'll find that, you know what, when you're valuable and you're excellent, they would actually pay you. Um, so, I mean, I can talk about so many ways to create value as an employee. Now, let's talk about entrepreneurship. Yeah. Now, first of all, but as an employee, I know a lot of people, there's a lot of pressure now. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. It does, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. If you can create enough value as an employee, work your way up, trust your process, and manage your finances. So you, when you earn your money, manage your finances, and you retire early, you can have a very comfortable life. Mm. But let's flip to the other side, the entrepreneurship side. I remember reading somewhere that 95% of the world's population are employees, but they only own 5% of the world's wealth. Wow. The only 5% of the, 
of entrepreneurs own 95% of the world's wealth. If you want to be a centibillionaire, like the likes of Jeff Bezos and all these people, and hopefully I'll be yeah, calling, yeah, talking yeah, about myself soon very soon, <laughs> you need to be an entrepreneur. So an entrepreneur is someone that creates value and s through products and services and sells it in exchange for money. Mm -hmm. And so there are different ways. You can think of um, solving a problem. Nigeria is full of problems. problems. <laughs> which means that it's full of opportunities. Nigeria is one country that you find that foreigners, oftentimes you see lots of yeah. foreigners mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. into the country. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a time I traveled, the people coming in, the queue was larger, the foreigners, than the people going out. And why is it? Because they see more because of the opportunities Because they see the opportunities. We so we, while we are looking at where can we chase paper currency? They are looking at where can we create value? value. Where are the problems? Where are the opportunities? So they see the wealth. We don't see the money. They see the money in the country. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at a con uh, 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 let's just look at one sector, agriculture. So in 2016, um, during the recession, a lot of companies in oil and gas, banking, and telecoms, they were sacking people in the thousands. And I'm Christian, I'm very spiritual. And I remember I was on my retreat and I was like, God, you know, this is not your plan for Nigeria. This is not what you said. And I felt God say to me, I'm reviving the agricultural system in Nigeria. And he told me to host a Do It Afraid Agri Business Entrepreneurship Workshop. And in that workshop, we showcased the um, opportunities across the value chain. So to go into agriculture, you don't need to be a farmer. There are opportunities yes. in transportation, in processing, mm -hmm. in different areas. And guess what? Hmm. If you look at a, I mean, somewhere like Joss. So mm. I remember back then, I would buy strawberries from like grocery stores and you spend ridiculous amounts of money mm. imported strawberries. The strawberries grow in the wild yeah. on the ground mm -hmm. in just wasted. You don't even have to cultivate them. They grow normally in yeah. just. And what happens is that oftentimes they, they are lost post harvest because there's a problem transportation yeah. from Lagos to from just mm -hmm. to yeah. Lagos. Yeah. So yeah. you can start a transportation mm -hmm. business, storage mm -hmm. logistics. Mm -hmm. There was a couple, a white couple that used to work in Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They came to Nigeria for work. Okay. And they realized, but they found out that we spend $500 million annually importing tomato paste. Mm. Mm. And they were wondering when and they we saw so tomatoes, tomatoes were, 60% were being wasted post harvest. Mm. harvest. Do you know what mm. they did? They resigned from Bill and the Gates Foundation. Imagine they would have been paying them a lot of money. Moved to Nasarawa State and started a company called Tomato Joss and started processing tomato paste. And they saw the opportunity even before Dangote started his tomato um, processing company. Hmm. Well, so, so if you would put it in a nutshell, are there secrets, for example, or, you know, footprints to get in to create wealth? You know, you, you've given us a lot of examples, but mm -hmm. if you could just summarize yes, it. Yes, summarize it. So again, is there, is there a secret? I know some people in, in the past, we just hear that um, when you want to be an entrepreneur, look for where there's a need and feel that need. And I guess that's what you're talking about, value creation. Mm -hmm. ah, so, so expand yeah, so a little bit more on that. In, in, so I've talked about finding the problem. And like I said, there are so many different problems in Nigeria alone. And I've talked about agriculture where you have transportation, processing, you know, packaging and all of that. Then another way is start something that matters. Mm. So let me give you an example. There's an entrepreneur, um, he's called Blake Mykoski. He's famous for creating the shoes called Tom's. So he was a serial entrepreneur and went to Argentina on holiday. And when he went, to, he was in a restaurant and he saw like there was a, a woman that was doing a charity drop off. So she was dropping off shoes to children in Argentina. Most of them didn't have shoes. Mm -hmm. And he just thought, you know what, this is such a, he would like to support a cause like this. And so he started getting donations. From people but he realized that every time he would go back to america get donations buy shoes and go back to argentina a lot of the children there was a mismatch some children would go home they didn't have shoes and it was disheartening so he began to think how can i actually sustain this business without having to depend on donations and he thought of a simple business model create a premium brand of the shoes sell it to the up to the american market and brand it and say you if you if you Every time you buy a pair of Tom's shoes, you're giving a child in Argentina a pair of shoes. Wow. And you know what? It became a hit. 
all the big brands started running after the company, partnering with the company. I mean, he says his first, at one point he got, he woke up with 10,000 orders and he did not know how to meet those orders. Mm -hmm. And you see, he's gone from just shoes to eyewear now. He also helped. So you see, if you want to be a social entrepreneur as well, you want to you want to help a, a, a you want to solve a need, a social need. Is you know what one of the things you can do is think of you know be creative in your ways, not necessarily depending on funding and donations. You can actually have that model where you you I mean his book as well. For every book you buy, you you it give a book. Yeah. And so because you look at millennials and Generation Z, yeah. they are more purpose purpose driven they are more impact driven they want to they feel like they want to be involved in something that has impact so if you want to attract those kind of people as your customers you have to have a purpose you know attached to your brand um, another thing is you know sell your existing business so if you have a business this, which is what you see in tech now. You hear of the flutter waves, the pay stacks. Mm -hmm. They're all raising funds. They're selling equity. They're selling a part of their business. Yeah, right. You know, another way is you can. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Find out what's working in another, you know, continent and apply it here. So Taxify is literally Uber. Yeah. Jumia is literally Amazon. Genesis, you literally mm -hmm. don't have to reinvent the wheel if you're not that creative. Yeah. Yeah. You can go and you can find. Uh, you know, some, something that has occurred, you know, in the past. And localize it. And localize yeah. it. Make it African. Hmm. The sky is this just This reminds me so much of Dodge M cars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> being smart. Mm. The first rule is that you have to be smart to be able to navigate and, you know. Maneuver. And maneuver. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it doesn't just come by accident. Number one, you have to be smart. Number two, you have to have a little secret behind how you navigate. So what's the secret of navigation? For navigation, um, for me personally, I would say, and this is me, like I always say, I'm very spiritual. So a lot of the things that I do, so during the pandemic, what, one of the things I did was I sat down and I began to think of ways to create value. So whilst people were looking at um, okay, what's the digital currency yeah. rates now? What's, rate? what's stock? A lot of those things are good, but those things are ancillary. They're complementary. Mm. So you look at a, a person like Bill Gates. You know, he talks about. There was an interview. He says that what he spends is what he has is the interest he's made on his investment. His principal. Yeah, so income. they are focused on how can we create. So look at Jeff Bezos today. They've gone beyond Earth now. They're thinking there's a climate change problem. Mm. The people may we may have to think of about how we're going to live on in Mars. Mars. You know, so they're on the moon. They're beginning to create transportation. So they are constantly thinking about value creation while we're. So yes, they may have investments in Bitcoin and all these things, but th that's just to diversify their income. So even if they lose money because those things are high risk, high returns. Even if they lose money their principal is still intact. They're focused on how do I continue to create value for my, for my country, for my community. So that's one of the things I did. And I, for me, it was more about praying and asking God for ideas. And I was able to write a business plan. And I had seven businesses, things that I'm creating value in in this time. So that's my focus. How can I, you know, so I talk about money is value. So if I want to increase the money I have, all I need to do is what? Increase the value that I'm creating. So, Omilola, can we be friends? Yeah. Oh, yes, we are friends. <laughs> we're already friends. <laughs> okay. Um, this is uh, beyond, you know, it, it, when you hear wealth creation, you, 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 you're looking at money, you know, riches. Um, it goes beyond that, like you said. Um, it's about leaving something tangible behind and... Um, about spreading the good news and the good vibes around and um, being able to maneuver all of that. So as a wrap up, what would you like for us to take away today in terms of how can people create wealth? Um, can somebody be, become wealthy by accident? You said no earlier on. You know, when you made that comment overnight in 30 years, then it's not overnight anymore. Mm. And so There's a system behind it. And financial education actually plays a, a very uh, big th um, role. 
So financial education in terms of, first of all, we've talked about just one aspect, and mm, I hope yeah. later on I'll be able to talk about other aspects, you, you know? Be, yes. The, the first thing is, what is money? So when you understand what money is, then you're like, oh, okay, so I just need to increase, create value. value. So if, there's a, if they say there's a pandemic or a recession, money doesn't leave the earth. Mm. It's mm. just flowing to where value is being created. And the human beings are still there. It's just transferring. It's yeah. an opportunity for a new set of millionaires. You're going to see a new set of millionaires and billionaires are going to come out now from this um, thing. I mean, the Great Depression, that's how America was formed. Sure. You had the great, you know, likes of J. Henry J. Parson, the founder of Quaker Oats. It was during the Great Depression. Quark Oats used to be fed to horses before. Mm. But he's also spiritual and he talks about how he got the idea. In fact, the, this whole celebrity endorsement ideas came from him. Mm. When a lot of companies were shutting down, he was ramping up. So at the end of the day, it's about financial education. You first of all need to know how to create wealth. But it's not enough to just create the money. How do you manage it? That's the next, That's the next. phase. And how Farrah you, will take you through that. How do you grow it? Mm. And then how do you use it? How if you, you get use all it? those things, you will be, able, you'll well, be well. For me, I, I hope that uh, the money is flowing this way now in this, uh, <laughs> in this period of He's the, now looking of, of at, at money. No, the because I'm, value. Actually, I'm actually planning a trip to Mars. Oh my and I don't God. know if Helen will want to come. <laughs> <laughs> so let's there go, you get that. Just take a selfie and send it. Honestly, we, we really enjoyed this uh, session. It's been an eye-opener, really. Yes. Taking worth creation, creation to the, another level altogether this morning for me. It's been, it's been awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I'm me. glad that you're not leaving. I'm glad you're still here. And Farah will take you on how we can sustain so you're not just um, a wealthy man today and tomorrow nobody's hearing about That's you. The cocoa of mm, the That's the cocoa <laughs> of the matter. And Farah knows how to deal with the cocoa of the matter. Of the, the icing on the cake, right? So okay. we're crossing everything. Mm. Pharaoh will be with us. All right, sure. so in a moment after the break, Pharaoh will join our guest to take us to the next level on today's show. Please stay with us. <laughs>